What's up? It's James from Uncommon. Today I'm here with Kia Moore. What's going on? How are you? Moore. Good, how are you? What you been up to? Um, I just got back from L.A. I went to L.A. for a little vacation with my girlfriend. Um, it was a lot of fun. But now I'm back, to, back in New York. Wait, what were you doing out in L.A.? Just chilling? Nothing, yeah. Well, well, like, what's like some of your favorite spots out in L.A.? Uh, like food spots or like spots uh, Just anything, visit. just like, you know, whenever you're out there, what, what do you like to do? Just kind of like hang out, honestly, like go to the pool, like sit in the sun and stuff like that. Like I know it sounds very cliche, but that's like the best thing. You to like do. L.A.? Uh, it's cool. The reason I went is because I know it so well, so mm-hmm. it was like easy. And the sun was, you know, nice. obviously a big yeah. part. Yeah, the weather. Well, I've never liked L.A. It's always a, it's a weird city to me. Yeah. It's, it's super boring, I, I find it. Like everything ends early, like got to drive. I don't know. Just because I moved out there earlier, uh, I was living there this year and yeah. just hated it yeah yeah no i've lived there like on and off like for like months at a time like over the past two three years so i've gotten like kind of used to the way that it, it works yeah i just feel like it's, it's kind you of like a very uh kind of like yeah and just i feel like it's much more of like just like a solitary lifestyle yeah. Like, yeah 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 there's no yeah it's it's a completely different culture between like new york and la um like in New York, I take the train all the time. Like I never, I, or I like at least try to like avoid Ubering. But in LA, it's like it's that's not even an option. option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, tell me a, bit, a little bit about your upgrowing and like you as a kid. Um. Uh, yeah. So I grew up in Queens in New York. Like I was born in Queens, grew up there. I've lived the same in the same place my whole life. Um. And uh, it like it's. Like, I think about it a lot because <clears throat> obviously people say that, like, what you're doing now has been, like, affected by your childhood or your your childhood affected what you're doing now in a way that, it, like, kind of, like, influenced you. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, that's definitely true because my dad is, like, a uh, he owns his own business, but it's, like, a um, live sound production company. Okay. So I guess in a way it's creative, you know, not in the same way that, an artist is creative, but he's still like, you know, there's like creative in the entertainment. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. It's kind of like, you know, very loosely in the same, <clears throat> in the same world or the same category. Um, so I think that like going to like work with him or helping him out, like affected me a lot, like just showing multiple things. One, like creativity to like the drive and like what it really takes to work for yourself and get things accomplished. And like, <coughs> be successful or whatever um so like he yeah he's had a big influence on me and like he's done that since before I was born so <clears throat> that was like my childhood basically um and growing up in Queens was just so like was just so real cuz you're like so close to the city but you're also like a little bit removed um so you get like exposed to everything like nothing is like like in an overdose mm-hmm. amount though. Um, like in, in Queens, like you meet every walk of life. And then I went to high school on the Upper East Side. So then there was a point in time where I was like only with like a specific, mm-hmm. you know, type of person. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the type of person who lives on the Upper East Side. So it was like going from Queens to the Upper East Side was like completely different. Like I was still commuting, like taking the train there. I, was, I think I was like one of the only kids in my class commuting from Queens. Um, so it's like growing up in Queens, you get to see like everything kind of, and then eventually when you like become old enough, like the city is so close. It's basically like you live in the city, but then you can still come out to Queens. You just get to see like everything basically. Well, but so like, what were some of the things that you were just like actually interested in? Not just in like kind of what shaped like your business sense and like, you know, bigger things like just growing up but just on like a small scale like just little things you were interested in as a kid I was always interested in cameras um funny enough my dad had this VHS camera that he found in because he knew that I was like liked cameras or liked holding cameras or whatever so he found like this big like TV broadcasting (coughs) some people call it the white trash Tyler (laughs) VHS camera um shout out white trash Tyler but yeah he he brought home one of those when I was like seven or eight and it didn't work. He like found it like in a dumpster or something like he was probably like laying on top. Like he wasn't like going looking for it. He was just like, Oh, that's cool. I'll bring it home. And I would like walk around with that everywhere uh, and pretend like I was filming it. And my, it got to a point where my parents were like, all right, you gotta like, (laughs) you gotta chill. 
like um so i've just always like liked being behind the camera and then um and then i would go to ireland every summer me and my brother would make movies with my cousin michael and um you know they never got finished we would just like have an idea i would have an idea for a movie or like a, you know a movie and um you know it, it would probably be like some spy like action thriller or something like that um and we would get all the the kids in the town to like come film it and i remember like every summer leaving ireland i would like wait for the plane ride home so i could like edit it it never like none of it ever came together it was just kind of like more fun but that's just i've always kind of like been interested in like cameras and and media and that sort of stuff um i was never really like into sports or whatever like there was a point in time where i thought i was but nah, i don't <laughs> i don't really fuck with sports so, like when did you basically like start developing like like your aesthetic for uh like what you wanted to like photograph and you know, film or whatever it was at the time, because I know uh, you talked a little bit uh, in one of your other interviews, like at first it was skateboarding, you just always wanted to, you know, like go and photograph the skaters and like film skate videos. So how'd you, how, how, like, how'd you get into that? Like, oh, this is what I want to like go shoot. Right. So like growing up, I think, or I don't know, that's like a big generalization, but growing up, me and my brother were always into like skateboarding and that sort of stuff. Um, we always thought it was like super sick. Had all the skate games. Like, would follow like the uh, like, what, like the uh, Tony Hawk games. Yeah, Tony Hawk and skate. Just you know mm -hmm. the skate. Yeah. Skate one, two, and three. Um, like the EA game, um, which is still like one of the sickest games ever. They and they uh, just put the uh, the Skate Three server back on. No way. Yeah. Really. Like so now you can play it online again. No. Yeah. yeah. Online was so far. Yeah. I love that game. Yeah. Yeah. No. Skate Four coming soon, maybe. You know? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. But yeah, that and kind of like, so we were all, always kind of like into skateboarding. Then when we were, I think my brother was like 10 and I was 12 because I'm older than him, um, obviously. Uh, <laughs> we went to, you know, there's a skate camp called Woodward. It's yeah. like, so I, we'd never been to camp before. And my and brother that was, that always, was the first time. yeah, my was brother sick. always wanted to go to Woodward. And, uh, but my mar parents always thought he was like too young, blah, 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 blah. Because he was younger before, and then eventually they were like, okay, fine, we'll send you. And it was also expensive, too, so yeah. it wasn't, like, something that I could easily do. It had to be, like, something that we had thought out for, like, months in advance, like, saved or whatever. Um, saved up money. So eventually it happened, and but I wasn't too interested in going to, because you go to Woodward to learn how to yeah. skate or BMX or whatever. I wasn't interested in that. They had a um, a video camp though, so that's what I did went they to. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, did not I think know they that. still have it. That's it's crazy. So like, just learning how to shoot like skate shoot parks Shoot and skate. So the you go to Woodward for a week. You stay there for a week. You stay in a cabin, and um, it depends on which camp you're in. Like, if you're in the skate camp, obviously you're going to start out with like, depending on what level of skater you are, you're going to start with, out with like pushing and then ollieing mm -hmm. and pop shove it or whatever. But for video, you're going to start out with like, okay here's how you like correctly expose a video or et cetera. That's crazy. I yeah. did not know they had that. I know. Yeah. That's so sick. And it that's was like, sick. Yeah. That's such a, uh, my bad. I didn't mean to cut you no, off, you're good. but like, I feel like that's like such a, as a kid, like a niche, like yeah. realm of video and photography to like be teaching a kid. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's so sick. Yeah. And like to be able to learn something that technical, but through like something that as like fun. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, skating. It's it's di it was different than a school like, obviously the whole Woodward camp was like a school but you know I I think like obviously in the loosest terms mm -hmm. of school, um, it was supposed to be fun and everything and it was so much fun, uh, but yeah like being exposed to like that because video is like such an important part of skating like, like video and photo is such an important part of everything nonetheless skating like, you wouldn't be able to like have any history of skating if it wasn't for like video um so that's why i guess they like paid so much attention to it so i went there and shot and edited and then put up like you know like finished whatever like my whole week edit which was like the goal for the week like you shoot a video you edit it and then you premiere it at the end of the week and it was so much fun and uh i remember being like okay yeah this is like this is what i really like doing like doing video um especially like 
for skaters. Um, so I came back to New York, whatever. I would like go to the Astoria skate park because that's like my local skate park. Um, and just like met kids there and be, would be filming there. And then, you know, just small things here and there. I was like 12 or 13, mm-hmm. so <laughs> nothing big happened. And uh, it was just kind of like that. And then eventually I started going to LES skate park, um, which was like a whole different thing than Astoria because one, my mom wouldn't drive me. Like I would mm. have to take the train by myself. To and the how city. old were you at around that time? 14 or 15. Oh, so wow. st- yeah. So still pretty young. Um, but yeah, that like those days were a lot of fun. Like they were all like really dirty, hot, like humid summer days. Like, uh, like you would go to the, you would go to LES. Oh, I should also put a disclaimer in. I was never like good at skating. Yeah. <laughs> I could like I mean, push and like barely Ollie. Um, but that's all you need to be able to do if mm. you're only shooting it. So like I would go there and I would kind of just like hang out with all of them for like the whole day. And, you know, they'd be like getting their one trick down or getting their line down. Um, and I'd just be shooting or talking and hanging out. And that was just, that was also a lot of fun. And then, um, I forget when it was, but it was like around the time that I was like going to LES to hang out and skate and whatever. And, uh, uh, there was like, a, I, I think it was like, I don't remember exactly how it happened, but there was a, a camera that I got that shot video and photo. And like I was saying, I was just like hanging out one day and then I like was messing with the photo setting. I was like, oh damn, this is actually kind of tight too. Not many people like, or at least not many young kids were like photographing yeah. skaters. It was all it. always video. Cause I feel like that's kind of easier. Mm-hmm. But not to like put down video at all because that's it's hard. But I feel like it was kind of easier. Like that's why I was doing it, I guess, because it was a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, like I started messing around with the photo setting, and then I was like, oh, I actually kind of like this, and just started taking more and more photos. And then um, around the time of like high school, I think it was like right as high school was ending, my friend Austin asked Pizza was going to L.A to work to begin working on like his first collection and this was when we were like 17 but he had like he's always had like the vision for you know years and years and years in advance like he knew that he had to be like working on a collection of clothes rather than just like one-offs or whatever so we went to LA meet Austin how did I meet Austin um it's funny because when I was in high school there's this kid William who's still one of my best friends uh and he transferred to uh, the high school that I went to for one year in sophomore year. And I remember like he stood out because he was the only other kid from Queens. The only other kind of like, I don't know, like the, the best way to put it, like the cool kid yeah. or whatever from Queens. Cause he was like into Supreme or whatever. Like back in the day, like Supreme was like the sickest Will thing Warren? ever. Huh? Will Warren? Will, no, Will Mahoney. No, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. He, uh, he like vlogs now and stuff, but he kind of, he's like stays in Queens. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway, William went to my school for a year, and um, but he was friends with Austin, Ask Pizza, and Steve, Father Steve, like from the beginning, like since they were like growing up or whatever. And then I kind of just like started hanging out with him a little bit, and then eventually he was like, "Oh, you should come like hang out with me and Steve," and I went, and I was like, "Whoa, like these are the kids like I really fit in with. Like I did not fit in with." you know, the kids that I grew up with in Queens. Um, I didn't fit in with the kids that I went to high school with. So I was like, damn, all right, whatever. And then met Steve and Austin and William and like Philip and Lucas and Jonah and, you know, everyone else. Um, and I was like, well, these are like the kids that I really fit in with. So it was like the first time, like I felt like I belonged to something. So that, you know, that in itself was like inspiring. And then obviously they're doing like the coolest stuff all the time. So that, you know, the best way to capture that is to take photos of it. So that's when I kind of like really started taking photos of like all of this, you know, going to L.A. with Austin. Like I bought a. And do you feel like uh, just to almost tie everything together, you know, like being with being with them and, you know, even being at the skate park, like kind of I feel like in a sense photography is you're almost removed in a, in a sense and when in like the situations you're in like you almost have to take a step back and capture everything like almost from an outside perspective so do you feel like 
you know, even since a little kid, like you've always just kind of naturally like fit into that, like, like just been accepted in whatever environment, because like, I don't know, I remember going to the skate park as a little kid and it was like always the most intimidating, like thing like being like 10 11 years yeah, old yeah, and like yeah, walking yeah. in like seeing of all course, the older yeah, the skaters 14, 15 year old like, kids like all, even, especially in new york it's not even really like the 14 15 year old like you have the full like 25 yeah year old, like, am skaters yeah, yeah, like yeah. skate Pro there skater, every day yeah. like yeah or even in the sense of like and i feel like it's the same at like walking into like a fashion show of, like you have yeah. so and so and so and so and then like you kind of have to remove yourself and just See, and so I, I guess I'm getting a little bit lost here, but, like, do you think it's, has that something that's just been able to come naturally to you? Like, you know what, take a step back and, like, this is the right moment to capture of these people and, you know, kind of yeah, like, just let them understand, like, what you're doing and what you're capturing and, like... Right, so, like... When I first started, that's a good point because when I first started taking photos, it was never to be like, oh my God, what's going on right now is like so important and I have to like document it. Mm. It was, it was more of like a natural thing. It's like, okay, these are my friends. I'm going to just take pictures of them. Um, you know, they happened to be like doing really cool things and I was taking pictures of really cool things, but I never like, I didn't have like that vision early on to be like, okay, I'm documenting something really important right now. Um, so when I was taking a picture, it wasn't because it's like, I wasn't thinking about, it was, uh, it was like, it was just more real. It was just mm -hmm. like, I was like, oh, that would be a cool picture. It wasn't, I wasn't thinking about like, oh, like in 10 years from now, like this picture is going to be like, you know, X, X, Y, and Z. It was just like, oh, that's a cool picture of my friend doing this thing. Um, but no, I know what you mean about like taking like a step back and removing yourself rather than like going in for like a half, you know, like half assing it or whatever. Um, so it's kind of like, I'm getting a little lost here too, but like, um, like I've never really been big into like documentary mm -hmm. photography, I guess, but, and then like that has like subcategories of like point and shoot or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I've never really been into that. I, I do it, but it's never been like my like, end goal to yeah. be like okay like i'm just gonna take portraits of people forever um it's just like part of it like if i go to a concert just for example i like i, I just not to be like like whoa that's really crazy of him to say that <laughs> i just like won't bring a camera yeah. because i'd rather not have like the pressure of like because it's like it is like my passion at the end of the day it's just i've been able to like turn my passion into like the beginning of a career kind of but yeah like that like stepping back in like another way, like not in the photo sense, but like in the sense that it's like, okay, maybe you're like the new kid and you don't know like what the coolest idea or the mm -hmm. coolest, like if there's a problem, like, oh, how do we, what would be cooler? Like printing it on a black t-shirt or white t-shirt, you know, mm -hmm. just something like that. Like, you know, obviously if you think it's cool, like say something, but if not, like it's, it's good to like step back and like kind of like learn from people who have been doing it for longer. Um, like in any in any situation yeah because I feel like that even with with these and interviews like it, it's something I always think about a lot is you know at what point do uh, do I have to take a step back as an interview interviewer and not interject my own voice and my own opinion and just you know let let you know the guests just like speak and have their yeah. mind like but also you know like trying to figure how to word it like like how how an interview can almost like still teach the audience about the guest but also you know make it more dynamic of where people are learning you get like a, a kind of like a peek into the person's person yeah exactly rather than just like spitting facts about what you've done or whatever yeah, yeah. exactly yeah like it's a conversation a podcast and i almost feel like you know <laughs> photography or because in a sense is, you know, even obviously not in your case, but in a sense is media and is coverage. And it's like, I feel like it's kind of similar of where it's like through that photo, you're, you're giving a snapshot of like, here's, here's my eye and here's how I yeah. see what I'm taking. Yeah, exactly. But here's the glimpse into the environment that I yeah. took the snapshot yeah, of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. No, yeah. And that's, that's, that's why I really like your work because, you know, you, 
you can look at a photo and you can tell it's yours, but it's not where it's to the extent it's like you also are getting a glimpse of whoever or whatever you're, you know, you're right. you're photographing as well. Right, right, right. And so, uh, you know, I, just to get back on track, you know, so I think we were at, uh, you know, you starting to take photos with Austin and all of them. Mm-hmm. When did it become, you know, not, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but less of, you know, just photographing your friends hanging out, but like a, I'm a photographer and like this is what I do and this is my job and almost like you as a business so that is still something i'm working on but um like how the story goes is the first photo shoot i ever did was with my friend mike he um essence mike mike the really yeah 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 um essence hit him up and wanted to shoot uh an editorial with him and he asked me if i wanted to shoot i was like yeah of course and um we had like some really sick ideas, but I remember the whole process of like thinking of an idea or like what would look sickest was like what I kind of fell in love with, you know, like thinking through a concept and like uh, what would be appropriate for a photo shoot, all of like the pre-production, you know, f- which is the umbrella term for all of that. Um, that was kind of like the process I fell in love with. I was like, well, I want to keep doing this. And then obviously like taking the photo, there's nothing else like it. Mm-hmm. And then all the post-production, like the selections, editing, all that. So I, I kind of like, on that project, it was like, you know, it was small scale. Like it wasn't like the smallest first project. It was definitely like a very like good first thing to have worked on. And I'm very fortunate. Um, but it was like that process is kind of like what I fell in love with. And I was like, oh, this is what I want to be doing. Like I'd found like little parts, like with the video thing, it's like, okay, I want to be like capturing things, right? And then... I found out I wanted to be taking photos, right? Like instead of videos. And then, you know, you kind of like keep narrowing it down, like trickling it down. And then when you finally get to the point where you, you're like, okay, I want to like do photo shoots. Like, what are you taking a photo of? Like, is it documentary? Is it fashion? Is it music? You know, what is it? Um, so it's kind of just like, it's a lot of time, like, and it's a lot of trial and error. So you try everything and you try everything over the course of like, you know, years especially when you're young and you start doing it young and you don't have to like worry about bills and stuff like that you kind of like have the responsibility or you have like the freedom to kind of like try anything especially in new york because you can you can touch literally anything in like a hand's reach um or at least be like somewhat a part of it Mm -hmm. like even if you're just attending um as like an audience member um but yeah it was kind of like it was that process that i fell in love with and then i started doing like more and more and I kind of like started branding myself more and more as a photographer but I still wasn't there yet like I was like oh this is cool this is what I want to do but like I wasn't fully like dedicated like all right you know this is what I'm gonna do and it kind of just took me to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and then realizing like like I have a knack for this like this is what I like spend my most time doing like I never am like stressed doing it like I always enjoy it I always enjoy myself doing it um, and that was like the point when I've like kind of wanted to become a photographer. You, like you do documentative work, but that's not never what you've really been drawn to. Yeah. So like, how would you, as a photographer, describe like yourself of like what you do and what exactly you're trying to capture? Cause obviously you do a lot of commercial work and campaigns and editorials and stuff like that. And I, I would say that's probably what you're most known for at yeah. this point. Yeah. But Definitely. is that how you would also describe your work of what you're trying to capture? And I mean, yeah, definitely. Because that's just what it is. Like, I'm not going to pretend like that. I haven't done the things that I've done. Um, I just like, there, there was a time like when I was like, when I first started out and I was kind of like working a lot, um, I kind of like, I was looking back at old stuff that I'd done and I was like, uh, this is cool, but like, it's not like there. And I kind of felt that I'd like been rushed into the commercial world as like, at like 18 years old, I was shooting like things that I had no idea how to shoot. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously I knew what I wanted from them, but it kind of like, it, it, it was different. Like I didn't, know the full process and like I wasn't like I I've always worked hard that was the thing but um so I kind of like felt that 
I was like affect like my commercial work would have like affected me negatively if I'd keep doing what I was doing. So I kind of like took a break for a little while to think about it. And like I said, no to a bunch of stuff. And I think that was like a, a very like smart thing to do because one, some of the things I was saying no to early on were like things that wouldn't, that were fun and cool. And I would have been like excited to do, but would have not been necessarily on brand for me mm -hmm. or at least like the brand that I'm trying to build for myself. Um, so I took a break and started like working on kind of like commercial work. And then that's when I kind of developed my like personal vision for my personal work, which is like evolved into this thing that I call commercial satire. So it's like, they're like photo shoots that I'll like conceptualize. Um, and there's the best, the easiest way to put it is like, it's making fun of like the commercial work that I was doing. Cause I think the commercial work is so much fun and like, it can be so sick and whatever, but it's just like such a, like a fickle industry. Mm -hmm. It's very, you know, it's, you know, it's very complicated. It's not just like, you can't just describe the industry in one, one sentence. And I feel like with commercial work, you often, a sense of personal style and yeah. taste gets lost for sure. Definitely a little bit. Like I, uh, in terms of that though, like I have to say that I have been very fortunate to have been allowed to like, control the majority of the project I've worked on which is like a blessing honestly because otherwise I would feel like like I was like taking from whoever's idea it was like I was it wasn't like authentic to me it wasn't my work but no like getting back to the commercial satire thing it helps me like work through like coming up with concepts and like or ideas for photo shoots and then so I'll come up with like an idea or think something is sick or funny or whatever and then I'll be like why do I think you know, and then work through it and I'll under like, I'll begin to understand like what it means and like why I'm doing it. So that kind of like helps me work through like commercial work in general. Um, like even for myself, like it's like the, the personal work is personal work. I do it for myself. Like obviously I'm, I'm going to share it at some point and, um, like that's something I'll talk about later, mm -hmm. but like the, per the commercial work, I mean the personal work is for me. Mm -hmm. Um, like it, it, it's like my artistic vision, but it's also like helps me work through things. Like all the time I hear like musicians or artists who make music say that like the only way they're able to like fully express themselves is like through music. Mm -hmm. And that I think can be true for like any uh, art form, like writing or painting or whatever, even photography, but it's hard to do that through commercial work. Mm -hmm. Even if you have the full control, it's still hard to do that. Um, so that's why I do like the commercial satire, the personal work. And would you say there's any like, you know, whether it's a commercial shoot or a personal shoot mm -hmm. earlier that that you've done that you look back on and and you're kind of like, okay, yeah, that's where I start. I really started to figure out like, that's that's the one where where things really started to gel. No, yeah, for sure. There was a shoot that I did with my friend Will Farrell, not the actor. Mm -hmm. um, my friend Will, his last name just has to be happens to be Farrell. Uh, that's just a disclaimer I have to give to everyone. Like, yeah, me and Will Ferrell did this photo Will shoot. Like, <laughs> the, the unseen photo shoot. Yeah. The best one. Yeah. Well, we, so we did, uh, we like had this idea together. He always wanted to, me to take pictures of him in a suit. Um, just like walking around New York City. Like he, he works in like art and he deals art. Um, and we went to college together for a little bit. He was, he's older than me though. He's like two years older than me. But he always wanted me to take pictures of him. He's always believed in me. He's like been my one of my number one supporters since the beginning. So shout out Will Ferrell. Um, but yeah, he wanted me to take pictures of him like in a suit. And then uh, as we were shooting it, we were like, oh, we should like make it funny. Like we should make it look like this guy's like a psychopath. Like the guy who's wearing the mm -hmm. suit, like it's a character. And this was September 2017. So this was like two years ago or, or I guess like two and a half years ago. And uh, we actually kind of shot it like around here, like in Midtown just on like Park Avenue and we we're going around and there's like pictures of him like with his head like he's like leaning over and has his head in like a flower bush and all this stuff and then I got the pictures back and I was like whoa like I, I'm impressed by these I think these are really cool and then I said to him I was like yo this should be like a, a commercial for a suit company but obviously one the suit was made by Zara or whoever it was made by mm. like we couldn't just sell it to them two even if we got into the conversation about selling our campaign to them, like they would have been like, wait a minute, this guy, 
like what this doesn't sell our product this just you know so i was like it should just be a fake ad you know so i got there's a company and we we switch or i switched around the letters to von Gervedo, so i'll let you figure out like what the real name is um <laughs> it's not that hard and uh that was like it was like a you know it was like the von Gervedo's like suit campaign for whatever it was like spring summer fall winter whatever and obviously it was like it cost me like 50 bucks and like there was no like like mood board behind it or there was no pre-production it was just like us in the city with a camera taking pictures and then so it was like that one photo shoot I was like oh I want to keep doing this and that's when I took a break from commercial work um like in September 2017 and then started doing like or having ideas at least for like a tons of tons of personal work and uh, I would get them done slowly. I would kind of like slack off and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I have this idea. And then the one, um, am I still like on track? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're good. The one project that I was like really excited about doing, but like kind of had no idea how to, was this haircut project. It started with Mike, actually. Mike got like this crazy haircut. And I was like, yo, Mike, we have to like, <laughs> we got to document this haircut. We have to like remember this haircut forever. So I was like, oh, we should make a fake barber shop. Um, spread you know when you go into a barbershop and you're like oh I'll take yeah, number four yeah. yeah so so I did that and then um, and then I was like oh I should do this with like tons of people and then I was like you know I was casting it I was like thinking of people who had like cool hair to cool hairdos or like crazy hairdos and then it kind of like it kind of like strayed a little bit off like I couldn't get 25 people with a crazy haircut so I, it kind of turned into like a portrait project which was like a look into the person through their haircut. Mm -hmm. um, but then like working all of that out, like one, finding a studio, two, finding like the time to shoot 25 portraits, three, like, you know, ex you know, there's countless number of things that went into it. I was like, oh, I'm never gonna be able to do this. Like, that's kind of like totally unreasonable having 25 people come to one studio. Like, where do I get the studio? I don't have any money, um, but I figured it out. And like through my resources or through people I knew, I, I figured it out. I got it done for super cheap and I, you know, I got it done, period. I like figured out that if I only got the negatives developed instead of scanned, I would save like $15 per roll and then I would scan the negatives at home and scanning the negatives at home is like really hard because you're not, one, you have to have like a really good scanner to get a really good scan. Um, so the scans were coming out terrible, so I'd have to scan them like, four or five, six times, and then I would have to do it with 25 other people. So that was kind of like the most dedication I'd showed towards a personal project because at the end of the day, that was just for myself. Like I wasn't getting paid. There was no deadline. It wasn't for school. I didn't sh like I posted it on Instagram, but that was it. It was just for like, it was kind of like to prove to myself like I could do it, yeah. you know, and also like prove to myself I can like see through an idea a personal idea without a team or a budget or anything. Mm -hmm. And then that inspired me to be able to like, okay, I can, if I can do this like once I can do it like a hundred other times. And now luckily like I have like more resources at my fingertips and I have like commercial work that like, um, like, you know, that I get paid for, <laughs> mm -hmm. like for lack of a better word. So I have money to like fund it myself, like produce it myself. So that's where I'm kind of at right now. Like, working on like a lot of personal work and so talk to me about you know how like how one of those personal shoots gets set up because you know i think i think with commercial work obviously each set is different but you know you have your your deadlines you have your resources mm -hmm. obviously you have certain guidelines from a brand but you know talk to me about like with your personal work of how you go about you know casting a personal project you know like scouting locations whatever because you know i think that's something that it's definitely not talked about as much yeah. from the side of photographer of, of, you know, actually developing a, a personal work. Yeah. So yeah, luckily since the personal work is, is personal, I kind of have like a, an endless timeline timeline. Like I don't have a deadline or any of this other stuff. Um, so since that's the case, I can like let the process kind of like happen naturally, like let things come to me rather than me like, go out and seek, you know, seek an idea or a location or whatever. Like if I see a location or I see someone who would like look sick in it, then I'm going to jump on it, you know? Um, but it's like right now, like 
I don't have like a very strict schedule. Mm -hmm. I was at school studying photography last semester. Um, and then I left because like I wasn't enjoying it and I didn't feel like I was getting anything out of it. Uh, I left for a semester to take the semester off to see like if I could, you know, work it out better on myself, better on my own. Mm -hmm. And luckily like that has been the case. But since I don't like have a, a schedule, like I don't have a schedule at all. Like I can wake up like at whatever time I want, <laughs> but that's like, that's like not the best thing yeah. ever. But, um, like having like personal projects, like when, you know, cause the commercial work, like it comes, it's weird. It, whenever it comes, it comes like, there'll be like, like, a f like a million things to do. And then when there's nothing to do, there'll be nothing to do. So when I have nothing to do, I'm going to work on my personal projects. And that's just like an internal drive and like an internal like push to myself. Like I have to just like get up in the morning and be like, all right, this is like what I want to do rather than, you know, kind of just be like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. Like I'll still let it come to me. Like I'm not going to press myself on like, all right, you have to like think of like the next thing or whatever. Um, I'll let it come to me, but I also won't like be like, oh yeah, let me just like sit around and play video games all day and it'll come to me. Like yeah. it, that's not going to happen. Like it, you have to like want it to happen, but you also have to like let it happen naturally. Um, it's all part of the process. Uh, but yeah, like w with the personal work, like right now I'm really trying to develop like a personal aesthetic and uh, there's like lots of stuff that I want to do. There's this show that I really want to have um, like at the, like the end of this year, the beginning of next year. And the reason I have like the deadline so far in advance is because I want to kind of like treat it as if it's my first, like the way I look at it, it's like kind of like my first album, you know, mm -hmm. when an artist puts out his first album, that kind of like sets the precedent for what's to come next. So I want this first album or first gallery show or have whatever. You, have, have you done any gallery shows or exhibits yet? Yeah. Um, but when I was like super young and it like, it was cool. It was, it was for Nike. It was like, oh, wow. yeah. So that was like the first, it was actually the first job I ever got paid for. And they kind of like, they brought me in and they're like, Hey, we want you to shoot something. Here's the shoe that you have to shoot. And here's a budget. Um, you do the rest. <laughs> Yeah, they like had they were just like it's like fully up to you. It's fully your artistic vision So like shout out Nike for letting me do that So young I would had been like working as like a commercial photographer for like <laughs> like four months or something and they were like yeah, like The way you should display it at a gallery show or have a book or something and then as the project was like finishing up I was like, oh, I was like talking to him. I was like, oh, actually, I don't know if I think I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do a gallery like the budget, you know, I kind of spent like too much money on the photos because I'd never done, I'd never had a budget before. And they're like, oh, I think we think really think you should do the gallery. So I like pulled the gallery show together in a week. Oh, wow. And I had like lots of help from my friends and my family. My mom uh, like helped me source like all of like the materials that were in it. My friend Clint like helped me print everything. Like my dad did all of, like the lighting and the sound, like my brother and William and Steve and Austin and everyone were there to like help me hang up all of the photos. So that was also like a lot of fun because like my whole circle of people, like my, you know, my family and my friends like came together to help on that. But, um, I would have done it differently now, mm -hmm. but you know, I was 18 at yeah. the time or 17 or whatever. Um, but you know, that, that was cool to have done when I was, when I was young, but it was a commercial thing. So I want my first gallery show, like, like that was my first gallery show, but like I consider this yeah. one that's coming up to be my first gallery show to be like perfect and all personal work, all produced by myself. Like I'm going to pay for the whole thing. Actually, that's, uh, actually I don't want to talk about that, but, um, like uh, sort of, <laughs> I'm going to like try pay for the whole thing, but I think someone else is going to help. Um, but, um, and is that just going to be of, of, uh, like one specific show or, or is that going to be a collection of, you know, a history of your personal work? So the, the show is all going to be stuff that I haven't posted or like talked about to anyone. It's all like, like I have some of it done right now and I haven't like posted on Instagram or shared it with anyone or talked about it at all. Actually, this is the first time I'm talking about it, but it's like the perfect first time to talk about it. And, um, so I'm just building like my, I'm just building the work and keeping it to myself. Um, and then my goal is to print all of it and frame all of it and then 
arrange all of it into a gallery show and the whole process like from the pre-production of the photos to pr shooting the photos to printing the photos to finding the location for the gallery show like that whole thing will be the gallery show it's not just going to be like when you show up and the photos are on the wall that's the gallery show it's mm -hmm. like the whole process is the gallery show um just because like the whole process of like a first album or a first like solo project is like really important or I find it to be like really important and I think it's like a really special thing. So it's, it's really important. That's like kind of like what's the most important thing to me right now. And then I think that if my goal is that if it goes successfully and I'm able to like, another thing is if something's not right, I'm not going to put it in. Like I'll be able to like tell like, oh, this is cool. But like, you know, I could have done it better. I'll reshoot it or I'll just like scrap it mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, but my goal is to be able to like have that personal work start to affect my commercial work so I can bring that style into the commercial work because I think the style that I have in my personal work is like is really fun and different and new. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to be able to like incorporate that in my commercial work so that it's just one like cohesive aesthetic all around. And then obviously I'll be able to push my personal work even further yeah. because it can't be the same as the commercial. So I'll just try to keep pr pushing the personal boundaries. Like, cause there's no rules. I can do whatever I want. Like I'll say whatever I want. I'll do whatever I want. Like my personal work. And that's like my, my plan right now. I'm not trying to be offensive or anything, mm -hmm. but there's things in there that are just like, like, I don't care. You know, yeah. it's not like <laughs> that actually is the wrong way to put it. I do care, but like there's definitely stuff in there that is like, would never be accepted in a, in a commercial world, which I'm fine with. And uh, that's kind of like my goal right now, but none of it's like offensive, mm -hmm. you know? That's the one thing I wanna say. Um, but it's just like, it's just like personal work. And then I think that I'll be able to affect my commercial work with it. Um, because at the end of the day, I wanna brand myself or I wanna build a brand of an artist mm -hmm. rather than strictly a photographer. Um, and, I, and I think like artist, the word artist, like gets misinterpreted like people think that uh you know people who s work strictly in like mix uh fine arts you know like painting or drawing or whatever are the only artists but I don't think that's true I think anyone who like creates who creates as an artist like any any like you know like writing or video or you know anything mm -hmm. I think no, I, there's I completely like many agree. different like types of art forms so like the whole influencer thing is uh, complicated. I don't really understand it and I don't really want to understand it because I, I don't really care. But um, the way I look at it is if you're able to like influence people with your art, then that's amazing. Yeah. Like if you have like followers and you have like a sick vision, like, you know, that's it. Like yeah. you're set. Um, but you can't like let the fact that someone has followers or influence distract from the fact that the work's not good, yeah. you know, or like, or there's no work at all. And like, I, you I know? think that's what people yeah. genuinely misconstrued now is that if you have followers that, he must be like yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, obviously that's not true. And unfortunately I don't think people are going to understand that just until time you know yeah you can fake followers you can fake like your presence you can fake all that but you can't really fake the longevity of your work yeah that was something else i wanted to talk about like having like a point and shoot career versus like a you know like a real like photo career like yeah recently i got to meet um ken the capallo who like i've thought was like the sickest photographer ever we were just like sitting down like talking and he was like he was like, yeah, like a lot of these kids don't understand like that you can't really have like a career off of like flat, like 35 millimeter point and shoot photos. And I was like, yeah, you know, I, I like fully agree. And then I was showing him kind of like some of my work and um, we were kind of just like talking about that. It was like cool to talk to like an OG about it. Um, like he's like, you know, one of like my biggest inspirations for sure. So it was definitely cool to like hear his perspective on it. And like we share perspectives. Like I had brought stuff up and he was like, I, oh, I fully agree. Um, it's just like, like at the end of the day, everything is instant. Yeah. So it feels so easy, but like 
it's not easy and that's why I'm trying to like challenge myself to like have a very like long deadline to work on a show so that it's like fully perfect yeah so that like if I ha do a photo shoot for my show and it sucks I can redo it like I'll be able to acknowledge that it's like that it's bad um, and that's kind of just like because it's so easy like you can upload a photo and get like X amount yeah. of likes and people are like, well, like, uh, you know, obviously in your, in your head, you're going to be like, oh shit, like that's sick. Like people really fuck with that picture I took of, you know, him or her. And, uh, but that's like, and they forget about that picture like 30 yeah. seconds later when they scroll, scroll and see yeah. like a similar picture or like, you know, something sicker. So it's like, it, like, I don't work for anyone. Like I don't try to like do stuff for like my followers um, I'm not like, okay, you know, I have to like really keep my following yeah. engaged. Like I have to be posting like, for example, like it's super weird. I, I actually don't understand why this happened, but, um, like recently I've been like b contacted a bunch by like for commercial work and I haven't like posted any like prestigious commercial work on my Instagram in like, like a month and a half. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's weird. It's like, I always thought that like, if I posted like the commercial work that I was doing, people would be like, oh, cool, like, uh, you know, let's let's continue. Yeah. But I feel like, like, almost in a way that, like, that personal work is, like, not, like, intimidating, but, like, in a way that it's, like, if a commercial company or, like, a commercial job sees that, they're going to be like, oh, like, uh, maybe, like, his day rate is too much or, like, you know, like, his ego is too large mm -hmm. to, like, work on our – that's not true. Like if it's a project I really care about, I'm going to work on it. You yeah. know, like stuff that I'm working on right now is like stuff I'm really excited about. And, um, but I've also said no to a lot of things recently mm -hmm. just because I've not, they weren't there for me. Like some of them like were big commercial jobs. I just thought they were like off brand mm -hmm. for like what I was trying to accomplish. Um, so like it's, you have to just like, really take a step back and kind of consider the overall vision. Like people always talk about like having the vision and having the vision vision isn't just like when you raise the camera to your face or like when you put the pen to the paper, like what you're going to make is going to be cool and like authentic and considerate. It's more than that. It's like thinking about like in 50 years, like how do you want your work to have affected, you know, X, Y, and Z or like what you want your end goal to be. Um, it's like having like the overall vision for like yourself or for like a brand that you want to build for yourself and like being able to, it's, it's a lot of things. It's like being able to separate personal commercial work and then having like time for personal, you know, activities that aren't even like that have nothing to do with work. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, that just made me think, um, yeah. just cause you've obviously we've talked about both. When you look at your like complete collection of photos and everything you've done in the past and everything you're working on now, yeah, and and you're talking about how you know commercial and personal work have influenced each other, do you think it's in a way where you would you would like to look back or not even look back but look at your set of photos as almost two separate portfolios? Or yeah, like and trying to build two separate portfolios. Or for you, do you feel like you're trying to find a medium to where they both like? are cohesive with one another, but no, I don't think I ever want to blend the two. Like if like on my website, my website right now is like kind of, uh, like not updated at all. Um, so don't go to it, but <laughs> on my website, there's a, there's two separate sections. One is commercial and then one is personal. So I think it's like important to separate the two and like, you know, be able to like think for yourself, like outside of like a commercial shoot, and like, yeah, no, so I am trying to build like two separate portfolios because I would never like, this is like talking way ahead, but I would never want my like commercial work to be like represented at a gallery Yeah. just because I feel like if the commercial work was represented at a gallery, it'd be more about like what the photo is of or who's in it mm -hmm. rather than like what the photo is about. Yeah. Which is like my personal work, I think. And, and I think especially now and going back to what we were talking about with Instagram and influencers and social media yeah. is sadly photography is a certain medium that has become less and less about the actual medium in itself, but who's represented in it. Right. You know, I feel yeah, like right fully, now yeah. that's almost, and know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just like part of like yeah. 
where we're at right now. Like there's lots of like things that are different from how they used to be. But like it's being able to like break out of that. Like obviously you're supposed to be like if you're a contemporary photographer, you have to like operate in the contemporary um, space. Yeah. Like you have to understand like what being a contemporary photographer is. Um, like, you know, it's it's the now time, but it's also being able to like understand that what contemporary art is forever has never lasted forever. Yeah. So when something was contemporary 50 years ago, it's not contemporary now because, you know, t contemporary art evolves. And it'll always be like, you know, it'll always like have its place in history. But it's also being able to like break out of that mindset that it's like, okay, what I'm doing now is like something I'm going to be able to do forever. Like one, no, because like, you know, people are eventually going to get tired of it. Because if you're not bringing anything new to the table, like, you know, people are just going to be like, oh, it's this same old thing, you know. Two, you got to understand, like, everything is, like, going in phases. And especially nowadays, it's, like, going so fast. Like, yeah. phases are lasting, like, weeks and months, like, rather than, like, years. So it's, like, having the mind frame to be able to extend your life, like, or, like, not even having a shelf life, you know, extending, like, your whole work to, like, live in like a cabinet rather than a shelf mm -hmm. you know i kind of like try to respect everyone's like vision you know like even if i feel like someone doesn't really like know what they're doing that's like one it's not my place to be like you don't know what you're doing because mm -hmm. i still don't know what i'm doing and two it's like maybe they do know what they're doing and i'm just like misinterpreting it so i try to kind of like have respect for everyone and just like let everyone like be and do their own thing and um but there's been times like in the in my personal work where I've like responded to like um to like stuff that I kind of see as not a problem but like like uh, what's the word for it like sort of like kind of like it's responding to like something that I don't agree with and it's something that I've like seen happen again and again so like in my personal work i'll be able to respond to that and make like a photo or you know have like an idea that is like you know shows kind of like my stance on that specific topic i don't want to go into specifics because i don't want to like like i said i want to have respect for everyone and like let everyone do what they feel like they need to be doing but it's also like you know like keeping myself intact like knowing what i want to be doing you know, mm. but um, yeah, I know I know what you mean for sure. I guess on a similar note, do you think that you know social media and Instagram, and how you now companies are advertising on social media, and you know they don't they don't need to have a whole billboard campaign. They only need something that's going to work on a two by two mm -hmm. square on a screen. Do you think that as a photographer, you're starting to see, um, like audience and consumers, you know? not not always like able to find like the true appreciation of what goes into a photograph being that i feel that consumers are you know photos now that everyone has an iphone has been something that is so accessible and not just accessible but <laughs> like 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 he was saying earlier is that now you're going to go on Instagram and you're going to see a countless number of photos in a scroll. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in a certain extent that. Well, no I, I know what you mean. And um, it's kind of like, I feel like, I feel like people have always been like misinterpreted, like from the beginning of time, mm -hmm. like no matter what you are, an artist, a lawyer, a doctor, like people are just going to be misinterpreted in general. Mm -hmm. So, like, to say that, like, Instagram caused that, like, I obviously didn't grow up in a different time, you know, like, I didn't, I grew up now. So, yeah. like, what I know best is now, but also from, like, studying, you know, past lives, like, past, excuse me, past eras, what I understand is that, like, it's kind of always been the same, like, humans have always been the same, like, I think it's kind of unfair to blame Instagram, like, if you f have a problem with Instagram, then you should do something yeah. about it. You should delete your Instagram, you know? Like, don't be like, oh, like, Instagram is like, you know, like, 
messing up my commercial work or my personal work. Like, yeah, maybe it is, but like, you can also do something about it. Like, it's not like it, it shouldn't. It doesn't have to have that power. Yeah, no. Like, you shouldn't like let it be like. Yeah, like it shouldn't have the yeah. power to. It, it's kind of on an individual to you know. Yeah. Not let social media or yeah, not even only social media, but any vice or anything. Yeah. It it kind of just like presents a new challenge though because it's like obviously everything is so instant now and like you can just have a photo shoot like tomorrow and then put it up on Instagram the next day. And like, you know, 50 years ago, it'd, it would have to be different. Like you would have to get it all printed out of dark room and then get the colors right in the dark room and then figure out like compositions and graphics and then roll it out. It would take like six or eight months. Now you can have like a campaign done by tomorrow. I know it's different, but then it also presents a new challenge. It's like, and, and one of my things is like, I love challenging myself kind of, and I love like never being comfortable um, so like the new challenge is like, how do you make something that's like going to be looked at for two seconds, live forever, mm -hmm. you know, like before, it, I don't want to say that it was easier. Cause I don't think anything is easy. Like everything takes work, but before, you know, if a campaign was printed on billboards, it's going to stay up there for like, you know, a month, you know, it'll, it'll be different. But now a campaign's posted on Instagram and it'll stay on your screen for like 30 seconds. But so the new challenge is like, how do you make it stay on your screen forever? Or how do you make it something that like lives forever? So that's kind of like fun, honestly. Like I think about it as like a fun challenge. Like, like what, what's the next, like how, like how do you do it? You know? Mm. And uh, Instagram like presented that challenge. So it's like, you know, I kind of have to thank Instagram for like presenting a new challenge. Um, I hope that answered the question. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely does. I just, this isn't a question, but just a comment. It's like, the only thing that's scary with that is, you know, it creates that challenge of how do you uh, make it last forever, but it also creates that pitfall of, like, a cheat code or blueprint of, like, this is what you can well, do immediately to get instant gratification. Yeah, but that'll, like, the blueprint is, like, is definitely something that I see nowadays. It's, like, people see, like, you know, they'll try three things, and then one of those three things is going to work really well, and mm -hmm. they'll be like, oh, I'll just do that forever. Yeah. But then after doing it for, like, two, three, four, five more times. After the fifth, sixth time, you're going to be like, okay, when is he going to like switch it up? Yeah. And then he never does. And then that's when people fall off, you yeah. know, like for lack of a better word, well, you're right about saying like, it's, it's hard to like be so quick to say like, oh, he fell off, you know, just because things are so instant. It's like, oh, he gets like a thousand less followers on Instagram or a thousand less likes on Instagram. He fell off. It's different. I think it's just like, when you like follow a formula for like so long, just because mm -hmm. there's no formula for anything, like, yeah, obviously I could make a formula tomorrow and like, you know, post like point and shoot portraits and it would work for like a few months and I would get followers, but that's just not what I'm trying to do. And and, and eventually, like we talked about earlier, those point and shoot 35 millimeter portraits aren't going to be what people exactly are, are asking for. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. And it's just like, you can't like, if you've never like produced a photo shoot, it's hard to start when you're like later into your career and already have like all this instant success. Yeah. So like it, cause it's completely different. And I've like ha been fortunate to be able to like have produced f like multiple photo shoots, whether it's personal or commercial. So I know what goes into it. Like I don't fully understand it yet because I'm still so young and I need to like have to years it takes years of experience to become like an expert or whatever like um but like it it's gonna be tough for when you get like hit up for a commercial job that takes more than like now i'm beginning to like learn that i can't shoot everything on film you know yeah. and film's easy F but the way i look at film is like is a using one brush versus the the, the other you know like in a painting um so, but film, you know, tends to be easier. It looks cooler. The colors are better, but you know, not every commercial job is going to like allow you to shoot film. Like I have to shoot digital for some stuff now, which is like, if you don't know how to use a digital camera, it's very different than a film point and shoot. Like, and if you don't know how to use strobes or light photos, you know, like cor correctly expose them, it's just not going to work, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah. And so would you recommend like, and it's kind of like a weird off topic thing, but mm -hmm. I guess what would be your advice to any, you know, young photographers who, 
who are trying to learn that and are trying to produce their like their first photo shoot to who don't know how to shoot on digital or who don't know how to produce a full photo shoot i would just try have like a personal vision for something that you want to do even if it's like a fake ad or like you're taking a portrait of your mom or a portrait of whatever like just try to see what the process is like like one, you should just try everything because you never know what part of the process you're going to fall in love with. You know, there's photographers now who, like, I, I still doubt myself. Like, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to be a photographer my whole career, but I, I feel like I could definitely, you know, work in some aspect of it. Like, yeah. if it's directing it or something, you know, something along those lines. Like, you never know what part of the process you're going to fall in love with. Maybe you'll fall in love with the lighting part of it. Like, not everyone, like, I can light stuff, but not very well. Like, mm-hmm. there's people who can light stuff so well and that's just what they do or people are able to produce you know they're able to produce a photo shoot you know they they put a location together they find a casting person they find the photographer like there's different there's so many different parts of the process like that you can fall in love with so but you're not going to know what it's like until you've done it like one two three four times and it doesn't have to be for commercial purposes like you can just do it yourself like like my all of my personal works like there was like a the most I've ever spent on like a personal project was like a hundred and fifty dollars, which is like a hundred and fifty dollars is a lot of money for someone who doesn't have money, but I didn't have a hundred and fifty dollars, but I made it work, you know? Like I saved up I was smart with my money or whatever, but you can make a lot happen for a little. And this might be a bad thing to say, but like when I'm having like my first pre production meeting and we're talking about a budget at a commercial, you know, pre-production meeting um I'll be fully candid and be like okay they'll tell me the budget I'll be like okay that's good but like it's not my first priority you know obviously I have to know my worth or anyone has to know their worth and you can't be taken advantage of and you can't be used which is like it's very easy to let that happen but you also have to like not be a for-profit organization like you have to to be like to really like allow your passion to like strive and like fully let it feel like your passion you have to be like non-profit you know you just have to like care about it like if you're not passionate about something don't do it you know like people always ask me like oh do you do videos too and i'm like i understand what you mean like videos and photos are similar but i'm not gonna do video because i'm not passionate about it and i'm not gonna like take it away from someone who is passionate about it you know like i'm not gonna waste my it's not a waste of my time, but like, I'm not going to divide my already like fickle time to another thing that I'm not passionate about. And passion really comes through. Passion is what makes like a project feel authentic. So you can't like let yourself get taken advantage of, but you also have to like, like if like you, you have to be humble basically. Like you have to accept the fact that some people aren't going to pay, but you know, like it'll benefit you in the long term. Like I've done too much work that I can like, I couldn't name the amount of projects I've done for free, but I don't have a problem with it. I'm not complaining about it because that's what I love doing. And if I wasn't doing those for free, I might not be doing them at all, you know? Um, and then through that you get experience, you meet people, all of these things that you'd like, wouldn't know, would have happened if you had said no to it what do i say do i say yes to literally everything or do i say yes to like stuff that's gonna like be on brand for me you know like saying yes to literally everything is different than saying yes to things that are on brand for you um like when i say no to something it's not because like my ego is too big and i'm like oh i can't do that because like it's not enough money or it's not cool enough it's it's not like about that at all it's more like I don't think that would like affect my portfolio positively, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like having that, excuse me, the thing I've been talking about, like having like that overall vision for like yourself or your brand or whatever. Um, Yeah. Anything else you? No, I honestly, I think we covered everything that I wanted to talk about. Yeah. This has been my favorite like interview so far or like not even interview, like 
conversation. Yeah. yeah. Really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you for coming in. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right.